for coming, and thank you for having me here. También damos la bienvenida. Welcome to Ariadna. Ariadna Gutierrez, welcome. También queremos eh, presentar a Nina Dobre. Welcome to Nina Dobre. Bienvenida a México. Y también con nosotros está Ruby Rose. Please welcome to Ruby Rose. And the birthday girl is. Dipika Paducani, welcome. La bienvenida a Dipika, que es su cumpleaños también, así que felicidades. También queremos pedir que pase el responsable de la música también, Nicky Jam, con nosotros. Y por último, the last but not the first is for Vin Diesel, our star and producer for this film. Welcome to Vin Diesel. Mira Vin Diesel, que es la estrella y productor de esta película, Triple X Practicado. Welcome. Hi, how are you guys? What is Increíble, increíble, increíble. You know, you speak Spanish very well. They want, they want more Spanish. Oh, they want more Spanish, okay. More Spanish. Si tu puedes enseñarlo, tu puedes hacerlo. And... It's in your heart, right? It's in my heart, it's in my corazón. I speak Spanish too. Okay. You can speak Spanish. I taught him, I taught him how to speak Spanish. Okay, it's nice to having you here, guys. And uh, I want to ask you a, a question for each of uh, you. And can you tell us about how it was to uh, be, uh, film this movie uh, and the back for Standard Cage and all this stuff? How was it for you? Uh, you want me to start? Yes, okay. please. I'll start. Well, it was exciting for me because Xander Cage represented a rebel uh, who was a patriot. And seeing that initial movie years ago, I was excited to sort of uh, reintroduce him and bring him back so the fans that know him get to see him the way he was. And also to tell the story of what's happened to him over the past 15 years and all the friends that he met along the way. So these great characters that you see here all tie into a, a, a Xander past that kind of gives you a history of the movie. And it was exciting. Uh, not only to tell Xander's story, but also to, to tell Xander's friend's story and to expand on that. Thank you. Muy buenas. Yo también les hemos que cada uno si nos puede contar lo que fue el regresar y formar parte de esta película. Así que estaría bien. Bueno, primero que todo, gracias a todos ustedes por estar aquí, por apoyarnos y por supuesto estar eh, dándole esta noticia a todo el mundo. Para mí fue una experiencia demasiado increíble. Eh, no sé si todos sepan, pero tal vez después de un momento un poco duro de mi vida, eh, esto fue lo mejor que me pudo haber pasado y de verdad que le agradezco a Dios por esa oportunidad tan grande que me dio y, y bueno, no me lo puedo creer, es como un sueño hecho realidad estar aquí de frente a ustedes y bueno, compartiendo eh, el día de hoy una película con personajes como los que están aquí sentados, de verdad que es, un, es irreal, es surreal y, y bueno, feliz de estar haciéndolo aquí en México y, y bueno, de México para el mundo. Nina, tú también nos puedes compartir tu experiencia. Well, I, the first time I saw the movie was 15 years ago, as many people had, and I, I remember feeling like, I mean, I'm a breast taker, I'm a thrill seeker, I love doing all the things that Xander does. For fun as well. So when I was when I watched the movie, I saw this guy and I was like, "Wow, that's the male version of me." Um, and so I was like, "I could do this." Like, there's a person like this in the movies, and I, I hope one day I can be in a movie like this one. 
and I quite literally secreted myself into this movie 15 years later. So, and I swear, that's a, I said it out loud to my parents like at the time when I watched it. I was like, I want to be in this movie one day, and it happened. So the secret is a real thing. Follow your dreams, because I'm an example that they can't come true. También si nos puede contestar eh, Ruby Rose. Uh, well, Nina just stole my story. Uh, I told her that story. Oh and my and gosh. And, uh, and lo and behold, here she is, acting like it's her story. <laughs> um, gosh, what, what an experience it was. Um, you know, yeah, same sort of story, of course, watching it 15 years ago and falling in love with the film, falling in love with Ben. Didn't know if I wanted to be Ben, if I just needed to have Ben as like my best friend, but he just has to be in my life, and here we go, I must have secreted him here. Uh, but working on this film was was such a family affair, and I, I you know, credit that to Ben a lot. He l allows you to work in a space where you feel like you've known each other for years, and allowing everyone to feel really comfortable and take risks and feel supported. Um, he couldn't ask for a better scene that's made, let alone a producer and, um, you know, Zamba and Vienna are kind of one and the same. You know, they, they've got so many things in, in common and I really just love watching Vienna shine in the role and, and by default allowing me to shine alongside you. So, you know, this cast has all really become such good friends and I think that we walk away with more than, more than just a film here. We, we walk away with this amazing friendship that we're going to have forever. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. get the opportunity to start the store in Mexico, such a magical, magical place to begin. Um, as soon as I landed yesterday, I felt like I was back home. I felt like I was in my country. I felt the warmth and the love from everyone. So thank you for that. Um, I think the one very significant thing that drew me to Triple uh, X uh, is the fact that I think the women have been portrayed in such an amazing way. Um, for me, all the women, Serena and all the women in, in Triple X, are a true representation of today's women. Uh, they're, they're intelligent, they're strong, they're independent, they have a mind of their own. Um, and I think women around the world have found that voice. Um, and so have all the women, finally, in, in an action movie, which is so rare. I think we've all been, you know, we've watched movies in the past where women have always needed to be rescued. And that was probably okay in that time. But times have changed, people change, people evolve. And so have characters in the movies. And Triple um, X is that movie where I think every man, woman, child is going to feel connected with every single character in this movie. And también queremos saber que eh, no nada más fue parte de la música que hiciste el, el sencillo para esta película, también eh, formas parte de actuando. ¿Cómo, cómo te sientes con eso? Pues bueno, muy agradecido que hable español. Estoy muy contento de participar en la película Triple X. Yo lo vi hace 15 años atrás también como todo el mundo y, y nunca me imaginé, nunca me hubiera imaginado participar en una película y mucho menos con Vin Diesel y, y todo esto actores aquí que son, son unos, unos duros cuando decimos en Puerto Rico el mero hecho de, 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 de que alguien de mi género de reggaetón esté actuando en una, en una película en Hollywood es grande para nuestro género es grande también para nuestra gente latina y es increíble es increíble ver que, 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 que un cantante de reggaetón que esta música mucha gente dijo que no, no, no veía durar ni un año ya está en las pantallas grandes, mi gente. Y aparte de eso, estamos aquí al frente de esta gente bonita en México. Y estamos haciendo aquí en México, mi gente. Estamos aquí en México, 
eh, haciendo la premier de la película, mi gente, más grande que eso no puede ser. Estoy muy contento, muy orgulloso de mí, muy orgulloso de nuestra gente latina y muy orgulloso de la película que se hizo en Chocolates. Vamos a hacer unas preguntas de la prensa que ya habíamos eh, escogido y eh, aquí está el micrófono. Gracias. Hello guys, my name is Tania Medina from the YouTube channel La Secuencia. So my question is for you, Nina. I know that you're a very funny stream girl. So I would love to know what was the craziest, funniest thing that you lived on set? The left on set? Yeah, that you experienced during this film. Honestly, the whole experience, I think we were all constantly laughing. Um, my character had a lot of had a lot of funny moments, but most of my funny moments were off camera with Ruby. And we shared them with the world. Prank wars, yes, not all of them. Um, but <laughs> most of them were shared with the world, so we got to include everyone in it. But we, we just, we, what you don't know about action movies is that they take a lot longer than most other things because there's so many stunts and you have to be safe and everything takes a while so that means that the actors have to sit around and wait for a while so Ruby and I were just constantly plotting how to terrorize each other's lives <laughs> and that was really fun. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Mexico. <laughs> well, um, first I want to say your movie is really awesome. Congratulations. And well, my question is for you, Nina. <laughs> well, um, you, Nina, I know you are the stream girl in your in your real life, right? But in this movie, you're so funny and so different as a person to you. But why are you say? How are you feeling that? That's actually what attracted me to the role. I, I wanted to do something very different than my previous roles. And as much as you think I'm not like Becky, I am very similar to Becky. <laughs> She's exactly like Becky. Yeah, it's true. You just don't know that side of me, but I'm very clumsy. I, I will fall even if I'm not wearing any shoes. Like, there's no... Uh, I, I'm the clumsiest person, I'm the clumsiest person. I'm the goofiest person. I'll do almost anything to get a laugh. And I'm very self-deprecating, but it's, I'm, I'm so young. You guys have a lot to learn about me. Gracias, Nina. Y eh, ahora vamos a preguntarle también a nuestra estrella protagonista de esta cinta productor. Where this question is for you, Vince. So you're back as Sandra Cage. How is this returning to this character? And when did you decide to make another triple X? Oh, um, I actually, uh, I decided to make uh, another XXX in 2009 uh, after coming back to Dom Toretto in Fast and Furious in the fourth one. And then, uh, because the scheduling it was very hard to find a window to do the movie, and then I went through, uh, a very challenging experience for myself personally um, while filming Furious 7. Um, it was such a, a emotionally taxing experience uh, and a challenging experience that I needed so desperately to play a character where I could smile again and laugh again. And doing Triple X was an opportunity for me to smile and laugh and have fun again, and I needed that in my soul. I lost a family member in the Fast Saga, as you know. And what I discovered when I started filming Triple X was that I gained so many wonderful family members. When I tell you that this cast came together like a family, you can ask each one of them individually One of the best things, the gifts that we got in 2016 was these sisters that you see here with me on stage, the brothers that you see here with me on stage that are real, real, real family and really love each other. You can see it in the movie. It's something that Ruby talked about. You can see that love in the movie between the characters 
and you can see we all felt how it bleeds and bled off the screen. So I, I came back to Triple X because I needed it for my soul, and I didn't realize how rewarding it would be, and how much fun I had, and how lucky I am to call the people that are on this stage, people that I care very much about, and people that are my family. Hi everyone. Hi. Uh, my question is for for Vipika. Happy birthday again. Uh, <laughs> uh, how did you learn to to manage this uh, guns in to the action movie? And how different is to be in Bollywood uh, between Hollywood? In what? <laughs> Um, you know, I think, like I said earlier, I was very nervous when I left home. Um, I was going to be away for six months. I was moving out of my comfort zone, uh, moving away from familiar territory and people that I had worked with. But the day I set foot in Toronto, I felt like I was, I felt like I was back home. Um, right with like my first meeting with DJ and then with Finn and then with everyone else. It was exactly the same. I didn't feel like I was anywhere else. I felt like I was back in home territory, working with the same kind of love and affection. And I think everyone went out of their way to make me feel really, really comfortable. Um, and as far as it being my Hollywood debut, I don't think of it as a separate debut. I think of it as part of the journey. I think as creative people, you want to be a part of exciting films and exciting experiences and tell amazing stories and leave behind an amazing body of work. And I think after all the films that I've done in India, I felt like Triple X gave me that opportunity. So I don't look at it as two separate careers. I look at it as one continuous journey. Thank you. Raimundo de Reforma. Hola, hello guys. Over here to your right. Uh, welcome uh, again. And uh, this is a question is for DJ. I want to know because this is something I get to feel in a in a way. How do you manage to handle so many? I was going to say egos, but no talents <laughs> and so many different styles and make them look uh, seamless, uh, natural on screen. How do you manage to make everyone <laughs> look? Part of a, a lot of editing, <laughs> like a CGI. lot, and CGI, yeah, literally said CGI. Because you know, it feels like really natural, I mean, there's Nikki and Ben and the girls and everybody, and in the end the product feels like like one single adventure, but I can imagine the, the, the hard work that you have in your head and every day during the film. Can you please tell me about that? Thank you, that's a, that's a great compliment. Well, I think each and every one of these actors is so unique and, and, and they're such unique individuals that in meeting them and getting through the rehearsal process and just kind of getting a sense of who they are, I think what I do is encourage them to inject, like, you know, there is a lot of Nina and Becky. There really is. And there's a lot of, of the guy, Serena. I think each one has a and Ruby, there's tons of Ruby and Adele. And I think it's part of what I need to do as a director is to nurture that and to bring that out. And when you have such an eclectic cast, I mean, Finn is so dynamic as a leader and such a great partner in the creative world. He's the, he was my producer, but he was more of the creative producer. You know, it's great to have your lead actor be your creative producer because you're not worrying about the time or counting the money. <laughs> um, so it was just it was just really bringing out the gifts that they have because we have so many characters in this movie. My biggest fear was not giving them their moments to shine and to really really take care of each one. And, and it was a it was a collaborative journey, but it, it's a it's really the talent that all everyone here has on stage that I was just able to kind of mine and keep up and push out because it, they're so gifted. It was there was times when uh, particularly after we got towards the end of the movie and, and Xander comes down and he crashes down. This really insane moment, and all these cars pull up, and they all kind of get out of the car. And I was looking behind the monitor of the camera, and I realized how blessed I was to have this entire cast. And it was just, a, it was really amazing. It was, a, it was kind of the first moment I got to slow down because the movie go, our shooting was going at 125 miles an hour as well, and that was one of the moments I got to really look at it all and say how blessed I was to have this cast. Thank you. 
I was just going to say, can I go first? Because I had the least training. It'll be a short story. They literally gave me a gun and said, don't die. <laughs> and that was my training. Next. My training was a lollipop. I mean, it was easy. I mean, you know, it's not easy. You spent hours on that thing. Hours with that. And then I, my, red, my, my mouth was red in the movie. It's a ruby. There are skills with that. Uh, it seemed on seals. Can you describe this? Did you prepare for that right? Yeah, I, you know, with films like this, the, they don't usually want the actors to do stunts that they haven't done before. That's why they have stunt people who are really good at it. Um, so you have to do a bit of training to kind of coerce someone like these and say, please, please, please let me do this and let me do that, and especially when it's in the middle of, of filming. Uh, and I was lucky enough to be competing with me and other gym to basically get into stunts I wanted at that point. Um, but it was fun, you know, I, I, the, the, the silks was one type of training and then for the sniper that was a couple of weeks of training to understand how to use that gun and how to, you know, assemble it and put it back together really quickly and, and how to even carry it when it's 20 pounds and I wasn't even lifting that much. <laughs> So, you know, there was, there was a lot of training, but I think when we got to the DR, when you and I hit the gym, I, every day, that I went from, like, just fairly fit to, like, a monster. Yeah. Like, I could have been sad. I was just like, I could have run through walls. And Ruby's being modest. She put a, uh, a plant cart that's a thousand yards away. She shot the King of Diamonds right in the head a thousand yards away. So she's quite qualified. She worked for that. Yes, she did work before film. Yeah. Del periodo Excelsior, eh, queremos darle a Pin. Llegaste en un momento muy peculiar para México, eh, donde la gente, el pueblo está reaccionando por hacer bien de cuestiones políticas que no vienen mucho el caso. Pero sí me gustaría preguntarte, eh, ¿cómo crees tú que reaccionaría el personaje de, de Sander Cage eh, ante una situación eh, social tan complicada como la que está viviendo en particular México, con Donald Trump como una amenaza latente en cuestión de días de entrar a la Casa Blanca? Etc. Si puede repetir la, 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 la pregunta, por favor. Se le, se le cayó el positivo. I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying hearing all these people talk. I, I, I'm I'm not not here, so. Y luego dice, bueno, todo. Todos entendemos que esto es ficción, ¿no? Sí. Y nos divertimos muchísimo con ella. Eh, pero está basada también en la realidad. Y siempre tus personajes aquí, o en Rápidos y Furiosos, eh, tienen una, un sustento social ¿no? y real que nos hace reflexionar de alguna manera. Eh, la pregunta es que ustedes llegaron ayer a México cuando hay un clima social muy importante, eh, muy polarizado, y es algo que vemos en tus películas, ¿no? Entonces, hasta te puede inspirar en algún momento. Eh, la pregunta es, ¿cómo crees que eh, Sander Cage eh, reaccionaría ante las situaciones que está viviendo un, una población como la mexicana, que nos aumentaron los combustibles en un 20%, eh, tenemos un, un presidente que hace cosas muy extrañas, y finalmente ante la eh, presencia de alguien como Donald Trump que está a punto de, de ingresar a la Casa Blanca? I, uh, I didn't know we were going to get into political, but if we must, we must. Um, well, first of all, I, I, and this is something that DJ and I talked about a lot before films. Um, the goal of the movie is to entertain. If you can embed that experience with a message or something significant, that's all the better. Um, there's a social commentary with the global cast alone. Just the idea that we have a film that's so global and has a cast that feels like a family. But, but beyond just multicultural, a cast where we went into foreign film markets Some of the cast didn't even speak any English. And we invited them to be a part of the Triple X League. These great cast of characters that are all so talented and have all been so committed. I think um, 
One of the themes in the movie uh, is articulated by the Sam Jackson character. And that is the idea that we do in this society need someone to watch the watches. The idea that we could just kind of relinquish all our concerns to some higher government might be a little dated. This film proposes the idea that we take a, a, a ragtag group of underdogs and these underdogs are going to actually check the supposed watchers. And there's something kind of empowering for our audience in seeing that. The other thing that I feel is significant about the movie is something that DJs talk quite often about, which is uh, the celebration of individuality. Xander and all the characters are so content with being who they are. They don't try to conform. They celebrate their own individuality. And that leads into the relationships. One of the things I think people are going to talk about is the unique relationships in this movie. The idea that you can have a gender irrelevant romance between Xander and Adele is something you haven't seen in a movie before. If, if you're successful in, in, in making a movie, a lot of people come to it and a lot of people have fun, which is obviously our first goal here. We recognize, I mean, DJ was saying this a year ago, there aren't a lot of movies out there where you can just go and have fun. And as Dipika and as Nina talked about, we came to set and we had a lot of fun. I had more fun on Triple X than I've had on any movie I've ever filmed. And you can see how that translates to the screen. Hopefully, people walk away feeling uh, fulfilled, feeling like they've had a great time and it's fun. But hopefully also that there, that there is some thought to shouldn't we be checking the watchers? If these misfits are doing it and willing to do it and are willing to rise to that occasion, shouldn't we all double check the watchers? Shouldn't we all be a little bit more invested in who's running our world? I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lynn. And this is the last question here. Uh, how do you like Mexico City? And would you ever film a move here in Mexico? Hello. <laughs> Funny that you ask. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I filmed Fast and Furious, the fourth one. Um, Paul Walker and I filmed Fast Four, and I brought my daughter, Sinoche, who everyone on the cast knows. I brought my kids, we were really family, so. All through the holidays, uh, my kids are going, when's Auntie Ruby coming to the Dominican Republic? <laughs> um, I have filmed in Mexico. Uh, we filmed in Sonora. And it was a great experience. Of course, I love Mexico. I love Mexico so much. I mean, it's, uh, you all know how obvious it is. Anybody that knows the Mayan Queen, anyone that knows Paloma knows how much I love Mexico. <laughs> Anybody that's seen Pauline or seen Vincent or seen Sinoche knows how much and how much I care about Mexico. Which is why when Paramount suggested the idea, as Dipika mentioned, to start the whole world tour to this global film, that will bring us to China, that will bring us to India, that will bring us to Europe, that will bring us everywhere. It was a delight to start the whole global tour here in Mexico. Busabe, te amo, Mexico.
Esperemos que regresen muy pronto y a la prensa también gracias por estar aquí. Les recordamos que será la alfombra roja a las 5 de la tarde, así que los esperamos. Thank you guys. Gracias. 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 Gracias.